Number two, show that when light reflects from two mirrors that meet each other at a right angle, the outgoing ray is parallel to the incoming ray. All right, so here is the incoming ray. Here is the outgoing ray. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove that these two are parallel to one another when these two mirrors meet at a 90 degree angle. Okay, that's our goal. So what we're going to do here, and they're also talking about like these are theta ones and theta twos. That's fine, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's just do this first, I think, maybe. Why don't we just uh, maybe erase this a little bit, okay? Let's just white this out. So bear with me here. By the way, how's your semester going? I'm sure you're in the thick of probably physics too, right? I hope it's going well. I hope these videos are helping. All right, and yeah, that's gonna be good enough. But you know, I'm very particular, so, okay. Now, what I'm gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna kind of call this, this one theta one. Right, let's call this theta one, this whole thing for now. Theta, theta one. And let's call this then whole thing theta two. And in order for these two lines, this one and this one to be parallel to each other, theta one, uh, that's a Q. Theta one plus theta two has to equal then 180 degrees. All right. Um, now let's start adding in some other angles. Okay. We also know that this kind of creates a right triangle in here, right? And why don't I call this now theta three, theta three. And I'll call this uh, theta four. Okay, let's call this one in here theta four. Now there's another relationship I can make between theta three and theta four. Remember, all the angles inside of this triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. All right, and if you know that this angle in here is already 90, well, that means that theta three plus theta four must equal 90, right? So let's write that down. Theta three plus theta four is equal to 90, okay? And now I also know that on this other side, due to the law of reflection, right? I know that when this incoming ray comes in and hits, you know, the mirror at this point, I know that the angle of incidence here has to equal the angle of reflection. That's what they had in the picture originally. Now, if that's the case, then this theta three must also equal this side. That must also be theta three. Okay. You can see the symmetry in the problem. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to also plug in like theta three, maybe over here, theta three. And then I'll plug in my theta four on this side. Okay. So we also know something else now. We also know that this is a straight line and that the angle here in total has to be 180 degrees. In other words, two theta threes plus this theta one must equal 180 degrees, right? So we can say now two theta threes plus then my theta one has to equal 180 degrees. We also know the same thing happens in the second case up there, right? That two now theta fours uh, plus my theta two is equal to 180 degrees. All right. So how do we now show that the sum of theta one and theta two is equal to 180 degrees? Right, that's the whole goal of this problem. So what we have to now do is maybe start thinking about doing some substitutions. Okay, why don't we see what we can do? So why don't we solve this one for theta one maybe? All right, so let's do that. Let's do this equation, solve that for theta one. So that would be then theta one would be equal to 180 minus now two times theta three. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is just erase that. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom one here, okay? Theta 2 is equal to 180 minus 2 times theta 4. Great. Okay, erase this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute now this for theta 1 and this maybe for theta 2. Now there's a couple of ways we could have done this, probably. Um, but this is just the way I'm seeing it. If you see a shorter way, great, go for it. Honestly, I'm just solving this as I go. So what I, as you can see, my process is kind of just like, hey, I throw out a whole bunch of stuff, all right? I throw out a whole bunch of geometric relationships here that I can see in the picture. And now with that I have it all listed on paper, what I'm gonna to try to do is try to get my way to uh, theta one 
or theta 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and solve it for theta 3. Okay, so I'm going to say that uh, theta 3 here, theta 3, will equal then 180 minus theta 1 all divided by 2. Right, first you got to subtract this on over, that's the 180 minus theta 1, and then you got to divide everything by the 2. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just erase this. Okay, and I'm going to take this now and plug it in its place. I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take theta. Um, uh, I'm going to solve this for theta 4, sorry. So theta 4 now will equal 180 minus theta 2, all divided by then 2. Okay, so I'm going to now erase this equation. All right, so if you notice here what I do is I kind of just throw a whole bunch of just relationships out there, right? And I don't know yet which one, honestly, because I'm solving the problem as we go. Um, I don't know yet which one will work out ahead of time, but I just start writing out equations that I know. Once I have everything kind of just listed out here, my whole mentality then is to solve for theta 1 and theta 2. All right. Now you might be saying, well, Andrew, you're solving for theta 1 or theta 2. What in the world are you doing solving for theta 3 now? Well, the whole idea is this. If I can solve this equation for theta 3, that means now I have theta 3 in terms of theta 1. And what I can do is I can plug it into here. I do the same thing with the other one. I solve it for theta 2 and I plug it in here. So it's almost counterintuitive. If you want to solve for theta 1 and theta 2, first solve for the variable you don't want and then take its result and then plug it in. Okay? The whole idea to solving problems is just spit out a whole bunch of relationships. Get it out on paper. All right? The more you get out on the paper, the more you're going to be able to see what to do. Okay? If you think I look at this and I know ahead of time what I'm doing, right? Some, well, sometimes I do. Well, most of the time I do. I don't want to make it sound... Actually, I never have any clue as to what I'm doing, technically. But, um, no, what I do here, I don't have a premeditated plan here. When I look at it, I'm like, all right, I don't know. I got to somehow make those add up to 180 because I know that if they add up to 180, then it's going to be, they're going to be parallel. Um, you know, from there, I just start writing out relationships. All right. And, uh, and then I just start kind of plugging stuff in, trying to manipulate the equations. Anyway, enough of that. Okay. But honestly, I, I do think that that insight is kind of valuable. All right. When you're stuck, don't just sit there. Don't just stare at it. Just start writing things down. Write things down that you might know. Think about relationships. Get more stuff out on the paper and then see how they're all going to fit. Okay? Anyway, I already told you my plan. So my plan is to now uh, take uh, this value and I'm going to substitute it in here. And then I'm going to take this value and substitute it into here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have now two equations. So I have my theta 1 plus theta 2 is equal to 180. Then I'm going to have my 180 minus theta 1 all over 2 plus then my 180 minus theta 2 all over 2, and that has to then be equal to 90. Okay, two equations now, one equation here, one equation down here with only two unknowns. I know I can now do substitutions and solve that. Okay, it just now, you know, it's just a matter of now plugging some, some stuff in. All right. So uh, maybe what I'll do is, why don't we make this, I don't know, what do you think? Maybe we should simplify this a little bit. Quite honestly, what you can do here is, what I would do is, I, I don't want to deal with these fractions, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. If you multiply the left by 2, you got to multiply the right by 2. So what that will become now is that will become then 180 minus theta 1, right, plus then uh, 180 minus theta 2 is going to be equal to 180. So basically I can simplify this now, right? This would be 360 minus theta 1 minus theta 2 all equal to 180. And then I can kind of, you know, move this stuff. I'm going to move these on over to the right. I'm going to move these on over to the left. And wait a minute, when we do that, what do we notice? Well, we notice that this is actually 180 is going to be equal to theta 1 plus theta 2. So wait. We already had that relationship over there, right? So if I just start plugging these in, what's going to happen? Well, they're actually going to basically cancel, but we cannot technically get a single number. 
for our theta one and theta two. And the reason being is because uh, they didn't give us any. So what I just proved here, okay, is I just proved that by using these angles, theta threes and my theta fours, and doing some substitutions then, I proved the fact that knowing this theta three and theta four, and this is a right angle, I proved that these two will add up to 180 degrees. And that is what we said at the outset it should be, that theta one plus theta two is equal to 180. Okay, we technically cannot solve this problem for each variable. The whole goal here was to kind of prove these two equations. Okay, now at the outset, it almost seems like we can. And the only problem is if you add the, if you subtract these two, the end, they're totally going to cancel. And that's because we don't know any of the values, right? All that we know is this is a right angle. I don't, obviously, the, the angle of incidence here, if it goes up a little bit more, the values are going to change, but we don't know what it is. So we're kind of just trying to prove the fact that by doing some substitutions with these theta fours and the theta threes, we prove the fact that theta two and theta one should equal 180 degrees. And that's just kind of what we did. All right. So um, yeah, that's that. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope that helps and uh, look forward to helping you with more problems. All right, take care.